But anyway, joining us right now is our Florida Orchestra music director, Michael Francis, and all the bright lights and video here. <laughs> Great pleasure to be back, gentlemen. I hope you are both well. Oh, yeah. You're doing wonderful. You How about it. yourself? You doing good? I'm doing very Staying well. Staying busy, huh? The orchestra's had a busy week. Now we're having a wonderful time here. Yeah, yeah. we're into the... The meat of the season right now, I guess. Oh, we're right in the middle of that sort of Carnegie Deli sandwich pastrami. We're right in the middle of the sandwich now. I tell you, <laughs> this is this has been a, a very, very busy week for us. Uh, last night, I had a rehearsal for Sing Out Tampa Bay, which the concert is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at First Baptist Church of St. Petersburg on Gandhi Boulevard. And this is a concert that we started last year, and it's, it was an event that I wanted to bring the whole community together to sing. Because singing is so uplifting, it's so uniting, it's just, a, and you don't need to be an expert musician, anyone can sing, and if you don't sing well, well that just adds to the flavour and the harmony, it's no problem, <laughs> so just come along and have fun. So last year we had this concert and we didn't know how many people would come because it's a free concert. And I was delighted and relieved to look out and see 1,500 people there. Wow. And it was a special night. People had such a wonderful time. And so this year we decided to do it again. And it's based around gospel music, of course, as some of America's finest music. And so we have the Tampa Spiritual Ensemble. We have a choir of 250 people, many of which have never sung in a choir before. The entire Florida Orchestra and some wonderful music. We have Amazing Grace, Oh Happy Day, When the Saints Go Marching In. Uh, he's got the whole world in his hands and also Too Hot to Handle, which is the gospel version of Handel's Messiah, which is hmm. just a blast. I, well, you ought to, you ought to, they ought to build a real large shower because everybody sounds good singing in the shower. <laughs> well, that's actually a good thing about a big church. It has the same sort of acoustics. So it works yeah, well. Yeah, it? So you get, oh, happy day. Is that the one? Oh, happy day. That I, one, Ted. I just, I, I don't know how to follow that. That's just epic. You've got to be on stage with me. I mean, that's that's good stuff right there. And the only awkward thing about the entire evening is having to watch a conductor try to get a gospel choir dancing. That's bad. That's not. That's that's the that's the that's not a pretty sight. I'm afraid. But it's a really special evening. Where have you been, by the way, since the last time we so talked? So since last time I was seeing, I think I had a little trip to Norway. I was in Canada, um, and then just earlier this week we were in Daytona Beach of all places, not quite so far. So the orchestra has been doing this residency around the state, so we went over there and performed lots of youth concerts, worked with their youth orchestra, um, had a wonderful time. And then the rest of this week, we've um, had all sorts of activities going on as well. Today we are going to be working with the USF um, composers. So they've written pieces, and we're going to play it for them for the first time. They'll hear it with a live orchestra, which is wonderfully intimidating. Be rushed, for them. Oh, they'll be terrified. It'll be great. <laughs> and also exciting as well. And then we're going to choose the, the best piece, and that's going to be put on my final masterworks this season. Alongside oh. Tchaikovsky and Beethoven will be a piece by a Tampa Bay A USF composer. student. Yeah. And then after oh, that, we work with with it, um, the USF conductors. So they get a chance to conduct a professional orchestra. So very much part of us going into the community and doing what we love doing. Yeah, the um, I, I got a, a, a message on Facebook from a guy that his wife made him go to a concert, and he was very much against it. But after seeing the Florida Orchestra, he's dying to go back again. Well, it's it's a wonderful time if you go there and you, with your friends or your wife, and that goes to show, gentlemen, listen to your wives at all times. Yes, uh, I know my wife is listening. Well, I took morning, my wife Cindy. to the rehearsal that time. She had the greatest time ever, man. She was blown away by that. Yes, it's it's a very special thing because when you go to a concert, you're not just hearing, you're watching. The excitement of seeing everyone play together, trying to understand what that conductor is doing up on the stage. It's just really. It's just a fantastic experience. And, of course, it's so loud. It's so quiet. It's so exhilarating. It's, um, live music is, is totally different to hearing it on the, dare I say, on the radio or on a recording. It's yeah. very, very special. What is, you've got uh, a concert this weekend, Tampa, St. Pete, and Clearwater. I remember talking about it, but I've forgotten what the concert was. Yeah, we have one actually. So this, so tomorrow night is the Sing Out Tampa Bay at First Baptist Church of St. Petersburg at seven o'clock, and it's very casual. We call it "Pay What You Can" or "Pay If You Want to Pay." If you don't want to pay, that's okay. Come and sing. And then next week we have a lovely concert of Beethoven's Second Symphony, 
uh, which is a piece he wrote when he knew that he was going deaf. And yet this piece is so uplifting. It's very touching. It's almost like him fighting against the elements, trying almost in denial at this point. Um, just soon after this, he wrote a thing called the Heilingestad Testament in which he admitted he was going deaf mm. in his early 30s. I mean, can you imagine that as a composer? That seems to be everything construed against you. And we also have a piece called De Ruffle's Requiem. De Ruffle is a pretty unknown composer, um, but he wrote this just after the Second World War, a French composer, and it's the most peaceful, beautiful, wonderful piece of music you can ever imagine. It's so gentle, it's so uplifting, and it really was him trying to find peacetime after the war. So if you want to come and hear a piece that will just, just make you just float on the clouds, this is the right one. And we have one more piece in that program which features our principal harpist, Anna Kate Mackle. Yeah. And that's a part of our series of um, a piece by Debussy of really showcasing the amazing talent within the Florida Orchestra. We just had our principal oboe, John Upton, play. And, of course, and our concertmaster, Jeffrey Malta, played a, a concerto just before Christmas. And now Anna Kate Mackle. I mean, we have formidable talent trained in some of the finest um, universities and conservatoires. And the Master Chorale working with you on uh, some of the concerts. Absolutely. They are yeah. fantastic. And when you hear the chorale and an orchestra together, yeah. well, that's even more um, that's goosebumpy. Mind-boggling. It, yeah, it is. It really is. Yes. Well, you can learn all about this. Um, you can check out the website. You really need to go to hear the Florida Orchestra. I mean, it is incredible, just like the guy who was forced by his wife to go. Was that you uh, or was that the guy? And you can get all the information at floridaorchestra.org, floridaorchestra.org. And Michael Francis, our buddy here, the Florida Orchestra Music Director. And, by the way, your English is getting so much better. It must really have helped good, you yeah. to go over to – Well, I think it's this English weather we have at the moment. Across the you pond. See. It brings out the enunciation, and it's very well for me. <laughs> hey, thank you, Michael. Great pleasure. Thank you so thank much. You've got to see the Florida Orchestra. If you haven't, go to the website, find a concert. It's going to be near you. And-